Hey everyone, welcome back to the Thinking Crypto channel, your home for crypto news and interviews. Guys, it was a big day for the market, lots of news to cover. First off, we want to talk about Gary Gensler speaking to the Senate Banking Committee. What did he say? What's the next steps? Who weighed in on it? We have people from Congress talking about it, calling him out on Twitter. We have people in the industry calling him out as well. And we have finally some journalists asking some interesting questions about what Jay Clayton did, guys. Big day, big day. We're going to go through all the details, and I'm going to give you every important information that you need to know about. Also, Goldman Sachs has filed a patent, guys, for a settlement system, a distributed ledger settlement system. It mentions Ripple and Bitcoin. So I want to share the details with you there. This is very bullish. This is a second patent we're seeing that is mentioning X, uh, Ripple and the technology that they're leveraging. So we're also going to talk about Solano and its respective downtime. Guys, it stopped working. That is not good. And the price is currently crashing. Um, also, we have some big news from Citibank. They led a $15 million investment into a crypto data startup. The banks are all here, guys. And NYDIG, I told you guys to keep an eye on this name. They are making uh, here a banking as a service solution, which will deliver white label banking and Bitcoin products. <laughs> it's amazing what is being set up, the infrastructure, guys. So we're going to go through all of it. Before we do, please go ahead and hit the thumbs up button, leave a comment below, and hit the subscribe button if you're new here. It helps support the channel and it doesn't cost you anything. Guys, I interviewed author Ben Mesrick. That interview uh, was uploaded earlier today. I'll put a link in the description. We talk about the GameStop short squeeze and his book documenting that. So be sure to check it out. This video is brought to you by OKCoin Crypto Exchange where you can buy, sell, and trade your favorite cryptocurrencies, and you don't have to pay high fees. OKCoin OK charges low fees. In addition, you can stake your crypto and keep 100% of the rewards. You don't have to pay any fees. Right now, guys, you can earn 430% APY on Miami Coin if you buy it and stake it on OKCoin. OK so be sure to sign up, link in the description. All right, let's take a look at the market here. Bitcoin back over $47,000. But nothing to write home about here, guys, because like I said, if we look at that weekly chart, we are still forming our support levels, right? We have this huge red candle. I still think we need to see more on the red candle side, maybe wrapping up this week, right? And then maybe we bounce up starting next week. But we'll have to see. Um, at the end of the day, this is a healthy healthy dip. This is important. If you understand market psychology and market cycles, you need to build these support levels because this will help us to uh, head to new all-time highs. And I'm certainly expecting a $100,000 Bitcoin price and all coins to skyrocket behind Bitcoin's momentum. So hope you understand what is happening here and you have to have a macro level view. All right. Chairman Genser, if you want to call him a chairman, um, anyway, here, here are some quotes from, from his uh, speech to the Senate Banking Committee. I'm not negative or a minimalist about crypto. I just think it's best if it's inside the investor protection regime Congress laid out. Here's another one. A small number of cryptocurrencies aren't subject to SEC regulation, but very many are. Okay, want to tell us who the, which ones those are and, and want to tell us by uh, not having conflicts of interest, uh, a la William Hinman and Jay Clayton. Yeah, he's, he's, you know, he's saying all these things, but we can see this situation from a 360 view, Gary. Um, we see the corruption, we see the conflicts of interest. So, of course, Gary doubled down. He wants more power, as we've been talking about. And he's talking about custodial crypto lending and staking products take on all the indicia of securities. So he's looking to now go after staking and, and uh, custody of crypto. And we saw Coinbase, they are now in trouble. And um, they're looking to fire back. We saw the comments from uh, their CEO, Brian Armstrong, on Twitter. Genser is out of control. But one thing in his statement here I want to call out, which I thought was interesting, where he said, I'm just operating inside the investor protection regime Congress laid out. Hmm. What does that mean? Congress needs to pass new laws. The Token Taxonomy Act, the Securities Clarity Act, 
And I've been saying it for a long time, guys. Congress will have to step in. Genser is a, a bankster connected to Wall Street, the traditional financial system. I'm sure he's working for Goldman Sachs and these other big banks to try to control crypto as much as possible. Why? Crypto gives power back to the little guy, the common man with decentralized finance and the ability to build wealth. They don't like that, guys. They want to keep the status quo. You have to understand how money and politics and power work here. And Genser is, is doing the bidding of the banking cartel. And I'm not saying that because I'm a conspiracy theorist or I have something against the government. No, I believe in regulations. I, I've interviewed politicians on my channel, congressmen and mayors and so forth, right? I believe in common sense regulations, no overreach, no uh, draconian laws, right? And Genser is trying to do that, guys. He's trying to stifle innovation because his bankster friends want to control the crypto market. Hope you see, see it for what it is. So, uh, you know, he, he was interviewed by the block as well after his speech. So let me give you some details. Following the hearing or a hearing before the Senate Banking Committee, Gensler told the block that Congress in its 1933 Securities Act and 1934 Securities Exchange Act painted with a broad brush, brush as to what's a security. The question of what is and what is not a security has been a defining characteristic of the crypto industry and its relationship with the SEC and other regulators for the years. In, uh, in, excuse me, in conversation, Gensler offered a broad view of, his, of this dynamic. He says, if you are offering a lending product, it is quite likely that the lending product itself is under the security laws, Gensler said. <sighs> I'm, it just blood, it boils my blood to hear him say these things. And instead of uh, going to Congress and saying, hey, look, you know, I believe in securities laws. I believe in the Howey test, but this Howey test can be applied to crypto. But we know he won't do that because this is about money, power, and once again, control by the banking cartel, which he obviously is a Goldman Sachs guy. So he's saying all these things and and, and like ignoring the other aspects, right? It, it's like selective memory or, or that's the, you know, he's just trying to put a narrative out there so he can get the control. So this is annoying. Now, quite a few folks weighed in. Uh, Congressman Tom Emmer, who I've interviewed on the channel, link in the description, you can check it out. He tweeted, is Gary Genser actually attempting to assume authority over stable coins by rebranding them stable value coins? Genser tried to argue that stable coins are securities. It's like, what, dude? What, what are you talking about? Stable coins are pegged to the dollar. You don't earn anything on them, right? In a sense that you, you can't invest in stable coins and then earn a return uh, by simply holding. It's a stable coin. It's meant to be uh, stable at a dollar or pegged to the value of the dollar. It's just ridiculous. So um, even people who are not like crypto hardcore enthusiasts are like, dude, what? W what are you saying? But he is trying to... Uh, put a narrative out there, him and Elizabeth Warren, they're, they're two peas in a pod controlled by the banking cartel. Um, here is Steve Daines, who is um, a, a part of the U.S. Senate out of Montana. He said, today at the uh, banking Senate banking uh, G GOP, I plan to ask SEC Chair Gary Genser about his heavy-handed posture toward crypto and blockchain technology. It is threatening American innovation, could push jobs overseas and crush our financial prosperity. Absolutely. We need more people in Congress to call him out and to step up here and pass these laws, guys, that are crypto friendly. Brad Garlinghouse, Ripple, Ripple CEO, said the following. Chair Genser insisted again in today's testimony that the securities laws are clear and easily understandable for the crypto market. Obviously, they're not. And then turned around and said, Congress needs to write laws to clarify. So which one is it? See, he's talking out of both sides of his mouth. So he shouted out Senator Toomey, who came in hot on Gensler. <laughs> he said, thank you, Senator Toomey, for being a voice of reason. Uh, Gary Gensler, man, they, they, they got to get this guy out. Now, attorney John Deaton, of course, who has been following the uh, Ripple XRP lawsuit closely and filed the motion to intervene on behalf of XRP holders, tweeted the following. After watching Elizabeth Warren and Gary Genser today, Brian Armstrong, Binance uh, CEO CZ, 
uh, JP Thuriot of Uphold, uh, Jesse Powell of Kraken and others should be on a conference call discussing litigation strategy. <laughs> this is a smart man. He's absolutely right. They need to like come together, all the exchanges, guys. Coinbase will be sued by the end of the year. The Ripple slash XRP case has become even more important. Absolutely, freaking lootly, guys. These exchanges need to go found, uh, put together a, a roundtable, a council, because Genser, unless Congress steps in, Genser will continue this nonsense. And once again, we need Ripple to win this lawsuit, not just because of XRP. I don't care if you hate or love or whatever. You think XRP is a shit coin. It doesn't matter what, how you feel. What matters is we need them to win so we have ammo for the rest of the market to fight Gensler and the SEC. Hope you understand this. Once again, it doesn't matter if you hate Ripple and think XRP sucks. What matters if you're holding Cardano or Chainlink or Ethereum, whatever it is, you need to be on board that they will need to win this because we will be in trouble, guys. They're going to go after Cardano and all the other cryptos. Um, and I'm hoping Congress steps in ahead of time. Now, uh, John Deaton also said the following, after watching the stage theater performance between Elizabeth Warren and Gary Genser, there is no doubt Coinbase will be sued regardless of whether it offers uh, lend. Don't be shocked if the SEC sues Coinbase for selling securities without identifying which ones are securities. So this is the black box ambiguity that Gensler wants to uh, have. No clear regulations. I'm not gonna tell you what, what the laws are or what the guardrails are. I'm just gonna sit by and watch you screw up or uh, screw up under his premise and then boom, gotcha. $20 million fine. Let's go. We're going to sue the hell out of you. The, operating like the mob, guys. Is, they're shaking down cryptocurrency, uh, crypto companies, guys. This, this is unbelievable. Now, something surprising, which I, I really like. Charles Gasparino, who is a part of the Fox Business Network, he's a senior correspondent. Look what he tweeted, guys. This is great. Breaking. One of two. One question I have for Jay Clayton and calls are out to him. Good. Why in the last days at the SEC chair, uh, did you do a case like this one against Ripple slash XRP? Maybe there's a good explanation. I should also point out government revolving door is nothing new. So him working for a firm that is investing in competitive cryptocurrencies, i.e. Ethereum token, isn't illegal. Still, the timing is interesting. You don't say. It's more than interesting. Seems like something you punt to new admin as Steve Mnuchin did with radical GSE ref uh, reform story developing. Guys, it is not interesting timing. It is corrupt timing. It is conflict of interest timing because we saw both him and William Hinman went to, uh, well, uh, William Hinman specifically Ethereum, Clayton to uh, One River, which is looking to get a Bitcoin ETF, and he also participated in some Ethereum, clearly trying to, to push XRP down, which was a threat to, XR, uh, to Ethereum, because we saw XRP move to position two multiple times over the years. Now, it didn't hold that position for very long, so that's what's going on. But guys, we need more reporters and people in, in the media to call Genser, Jay Clayton, all these people out, because this is the elephant in the room. Why? Right? Look at the timing. Look how he did it. Very sneaky, very shady. But we know this already, who, those of us who've been following this. But we need mainstream to pick it up. And I'm glad to see this. So I think we'll, we'll see more folks follow suit. But regardless, they ain't stopping crypto. Crypto is global. So even if Genser puts in something and the SEC, they, they put all these lawsuits out and it gets really messy. Um, I think that's just a short-term thing, long-term, because the crypto market is bigger than the United States. Um, crypto is going to be fine. So guys, check this out. <laughs> and shout out to King Solomon on Twitter. And he has a YouTube channel who found this. Um, I didn't find it. He found it. Uh, systems and methods for updating a distributed ledger based on partial validations of transactions. This is a patent application from who? Goldman Sachs and Co. LLC. <laughs> uh, let me give you the abstract around it. 
The systems and methods described herein relate to processing financial transactions using a computer network that stores a distributed ledger and particularly to update the distributed ledger based on data messages received from validation service servers that each store a portion of the ledger corresponding to a respective asset. The systems and methods described herein employ the distributed ledger to control visibility of transactions to the general marketplace, plus still provide swift and assured completion of transactions and visibility and audit capability for regulators. Now you do a search for Ripple and it is mentioned seven times along with Bitcoin. Let me give you some details here. Intraday liquidity requirements can be reduced by processing transactions in near real time such that transactions settle before new transactions are initiated. In the in conventional banking systems, this is difficult. Ah, so there's a problem, right? That's why I'm so bullish on XRP and what Ripple is bringing the solution to bring instant real time settlement in a matter of seconds. So if not impossible to realize because payments need to move through multiple private ledgers and thus incur delay. Cryptographic currencies such as Bitcoin or Ripple maintain transaction records in a single ledger for all participants and thus are able to process transactions in order and fast compared to conventional banking systems. For example, Ripple typically processes transactions in a matter of a few seconds. Now, they say Ripple, but we know they're talking about the asset XRP because they mentioned Bitcoin specifically, right? So this is probably somebody who's not fully educated as to, to the difference. They understand how the technology works, but they, you know, like new people to the market and people who are not in the market, they'll say Ripple is a Ripple, right? And it's like, no, the Ripple is a company, XRP is the asset. So that's what this is about. So clearly... The thing that settles in a, in a matter of a few seconds is XRP. And they continue here, and Bitcoin in a matter of few hours. Well, we know that. <laughs> However, these systems suffer from significant disadvantages in terms of privacy because they maintain balances and transaction records in publicly accessible ledgers that are stored on distributed servers. Now, go back to my interview with who? Ripple's David Schwartz talking about XRP federated sidechains, and those sidechains are private. I think this is probably why David came out and said, or you know, Ripple, like, hey, we need to create this private ledger. And I'm sure they're talking to the guys at Goldman Sachs and Citi and JP Morgan because they're trying to get them to leverage the technology. And by the way, if you haven't seen my interview with David on that, link will be in the description, guys. I hope you, those of you who watch the interview and, and follow Ripple and XRP, you, you see what is happening here. Uh, this is pretty clear if you read between the lines. So this transparency helps maintain the accuracy of records by allowing many parties to observe and approve uh, changes applied to ledger, blah, blah, blah. So they're talking about they need privacy. Um, and let me give you some other details. While crypto ledger systems such as Bitcoin and Ripple may um, obfuscate the identity of a specific party by using arbitrary account numbers that are not easy. Okay, so they continue about the, the uh, uh, respective lack of privacy because these banks, obviously, they want full privacy when things are moved, but Ripple has a solution. But anyway, the point is, they mentioned Ripple multiple times. I don't know if this means that they're going to be working Ripple and using XRP. I don't know. But clearly, clearly, my friends, in their patent, and we saw this with the Synchrony Bank patent, which um, King Solomon found as well, they mentioned Ripple and XRP, guys. I mean, if you don't see what's going on here, I don't know, your head is buried in the sand. Ripple is doing big things and it is a disruptive technology is the reason why I decided to get into XRP because it's going to be used to improve payments and settlement. And uh, once again, I don't want to say, hey, Goldman Sachs is going to use XRP. We don't know that. And I want to make sure I keep things balanced. But clearly, clearly it is a disruptive solution that works. And these Goldman Sachs guys, the Synchrony Bank, and all these guys are looking to how they, can we build our own version, or they may have to capitulate and use the technology. That is to be seen. Um, I do think Ripple has the best solution. I don't 
see any other solutions like there that are mentioned. And clearly Goldman Sachs recognizes that solution because they mentioned it in their patent filing. I mean, come on, right? Let, let, let's 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 put our thinking caps on here and see, and you can clearly see what is taking place. So, uh, pretty amazing what's happening. And I'm bullish on XRP. It's my number one holding. You guys know that. Number two is Bitcoin. Number three, Ethereum. All right, guys. Moving ahead, Solana. Man, I've been saying if you hold Solana, congratulations, you're making money. But this is not a good sign. What just happened here? This could be a death sentence. Um, on the prices crashing. Solana experiences transaction stoppage as developers report intermittent instability. Wow. The Solana Foundation explained that Solana mainnet beta encountered a large increase in transaction load, which peaked at 400,000 transactions per second. These transactions flooded the transaction processing queue and lack of prioritization of network critical messaging caused the network to start forking. Oh man, uh, the this forking led to excessive memory consumption causing some nodes to go offline. Uh, I ain't messing with no Solana. They, they better figure this out. Look, they could still recover, but this is not good at all. And look, I'm also, I don't wanna be too harsh because look, if you guys go back to the early days of the internet, web 1.0, a lot of things broke. A lot of things were not good. And trust me, I know that for a fact. I, I can't tell you what I was involved with, but I, let's just say I, I was part of exploiting some of those loopholes and problems, right? Uh, it, while I was in high school. Um, but this is uh, not good. So we'll see what happens. And uh, I think Cardano and Ethereum are still solid bets when it comes from to, to proof of stake and smart contract technology. Tolano has a way to go. Um, Reza Bahash, who I've interviewed on the on the channel, he's CTO at Coinfield Crypto Exchange. I like what he had to say. Yesterday, Solana blockchain has was halted by the validators controlled by their dev team. If tomorrow Ripple deliberately wants to stop the XRP ledger for whatever reason, they can't. Other validators run by the community are capable of running the ledger smoothly. And that is what you call decentralization. So some food for thought there. Now, guys. Look at this headline. City heads $15 million Series A for crypto data startup Ember Data. A couple of things. These banks are jumping in. They are not only buying the assets, they're investing in the, in the companies building the infrastructure. That, my friends, is incredibly bullish. They are double dipping. How many times have I said it? I wish I was an accredited investor so I could double dip as well. Hold the assets but go invest in these companies that are looking to build different services, whether it be exchanges, data, analytics, whatever it is, custody. I would love to be uh, you know, doing that. So uh, maybe this is bull run. I will become, uh, I'll be at the level of an accredited investor and I'll be able to do that. And uh, I will certainly share that, that information un unless there's an NDA, but I will let you know, hey, I'm investing in this respective company and so on and so forth. Uh, so Amber Data, a crypto-focused data startup, excuse me, a crypto-focused data startup has raised a $15 million uh, Series A funding round led by Citi. Other participants uh, in the funding round include Franklin Templeton, Rovita Kryptos Assets, and Galaxy Digital. That's Mike Novogratz. The firm said the Golden Tree Asset Management Executives, as well as existing investor HWVP, also led the round. Uh, Amber Data said it would use the money to double its research and development staff and grow its market presence. So think about this. Think about this. Put your thinking cap on now. They're not the, the money, they're going to double their research and development staff. So they're probably not even profitable yet. They're probably not even making money in that well. You know, uh, it could look, they could be making some money, but the point is it's they're in a startup phase and uh, they still have to prove themselves. But Citibank and all these investors are betting on it because they see the market going where? Up to the moon. They know this thing is going to become mainstream. They know it's going to become mature and these services will be needed and they will make a return on their investment. Clear as day, uh, hope you understand what is taking place here, my friends. Finally, NYDIG, and you should recognize that name because we've talked a lot about it. I told you guys, keep an eye on it. 
In my interview with Tim Vanderham of NCR, we talk about the partnership with uh, NY, NYDIG bringing Bitcoin and crypto to 650 plus banks and credit unions. Here's what they tweeted today. The integration of our turnkey platform with MVP, MVB, excuse me, bankings, banking as a service solutions will deliver white label banking and Bitcoin products side by side to more than 50 clients in fintech, payments and gaming. More on this milestone from BlockWorks. Guys, I hope in your mind and in your heart, you are seeing what's happening is resonating and you're not panicking because of price because price will follow all this news and this building and investing but patience 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 it's so important that that one thing of patience right i think warren buffett had had the quote of uh, the transfer of wealth in the stock market is from the uh, impatient to the patient remove stock market and put crypto market in there. Um, look, at the end of the day, I'm not a financial advisor. I'm not telling you what to invest in and what to do with your money. Um, but I'm just telling you simple principles of investing and what these big players are doing and what I'm doing and my perspective. And you can go read up on this and, and learn about market cycles and how things in previous markets and bull markets took time for adoption and then price followed. Just go study the dot-com boom, right? So uh, even though I, I, I'm like very passionate about it, I do want you to also just go research it yourself, read up on it and, and verify what I'm saying, guys. Um, but my goodness, it, this is so bullish. And these, these, these are not like mom and pop shop investment firms. These are Wall Street institutions, massive Wall Street institutions. And uh, I'm so bullish in this market. I, you know, like I said, the Gary Gensler news is uh, a downer. Uh, you know, uh, Congress needs to step in. But long term, I think this will all be fine because the smart money, they're still investing. And that's who you have to follow because they're the ones who buy the politicians and pay off the politicians, all right? All right, guys, what do you think? Leave your thoughts and comments below. Hit the thumbs up button. Share this video. And I'll talk to you all later.